Welcome to Shop Talk. I get quite a few questions about porting chainsaws. I'm just going to do a quick overview on what uh, happens when you port a chainsaw and how you do it. A lot of different variations. Different guys have their different way of doing it. I do the West Coast build. It's a build that uh, does increase the performance of the chainsaw. Plus, we try to keep the reliability up. You can overdo it on a lot of these and create yourself a real problem. First off, what I like to do, and you've heard me say it many times, is I like to use OEM equipment. This is a non-OEM. This is an aftermarket cylinder here. Came off of steel, ran about an hour. The guy sent it to me, and it's already starting to turn colors. It will eventually turn green on the outside. And on the inside, the chrome was real poor, and it's already starting to peel. And he just put this on. This is one of those infamous big block you hear all about guys talking about the big block well when you hear that you know run the other direction because it's not quality start with an OEM and this is a 372 and what uh, you you're going to do is you're going to deck the cylinder I talk about that quite a bit and guys ask what that is when you deck the cylinder it's chucked in a precision lathe and the bottom part is shaved or trimmed depending on what you tell your machinist to do and that increases the compression ratio of the squish as you see up here as you rotate the piston you can see where the pistons coming up and this is exaggeration but anyway as you uh, have a stock squish you know you stop you know we're, we're, we're guesstimating here but when it's shaved of course that piston is up near the top and you've increased the ratio and that's why you should run premium gasoline in your uh, Two cycles, it's just a good idea, especially when you up the compression ratio. You're also going to change the intake port, enlarge it, and make it timing changed. You're also going to change the transfer ports. Let's see how these work. As that piston goes down, compressing all the gas and uh, vapors in the crankcase. You can see where it opens up right here and pushes it up into the chamber before you compress it and fires. You go ahead and enlarge these, but you do need this little dam in here. You don't want to take this off completely flush. You want this little dam. It just increases velocity. You'll do the exhaust same way. On that, you're going to change it and you're going to enlarge the exhaust and change the timing on it. After you get all that done you should pressure if you get it assembled, pressure vacuum test it, make sure you've got a good seal. It's easy to miss something and have a leak and take out your very high performance engine. You need to change the timing and also if you've got the limited coil you want to go to an unlimited coil and these are available in a lot of different saws the uh, black coil of course on the 372 but use an OEM the uh, aftermarket ones I've checked the timing on those and they're not accurate you need to get a real quality OEM uh, ignition coil and you can do it on the steels several models of those increases the RPMs about a thousand RPMs and then of course put it all back together and uh, do some test cuts and whatnot but anyway that's just an overview we do the West Coast build here. That's a build to uh, increase the performance, but try to keep the reliability good. We don't want to build something that's not going to perform good for you and scatter. Any questions, there's the information.